good evening. And wherever you listen throughout the universe, it's time for the Jackson Christian Eagle Show in Tennessee mm -hmm. and all over the universe. With me, two special guests. Big win last week. We've got to talk about big game this week. Every game is a big game now. It's like wrestling, loser leave town mm -hmm. when those games come up. Well, we know there was supposed to have been a basketball game tonight, but there's not. There was unfortunate happening up at Clarksburg High School, and our condolences from the whole Jackson Christian family and our broadcast group. And uh, I had worked with some of those kids up there this summer because they didn't have a basketball coach. So they've got a good one now, and we would, like I said, just remember those people in their prayer. That's tough times, and that's the reason what these gentlemen carry on their shirts sometimes what they emphasize at practice in the weight room and the kids emphasize too is family. And we could have started and finished the game with We Are Family last week as we came back and, um, you know, nobody gave us a chance to come back. I don't care. Even the most rabid, the coaches and the players believed. The announcers, of course, the old coach here, he believed, but he had a little bit of butterflies <laughs> there during the game. 18 points down, we come back. Here he is, the man with the plan, the head coach, Darby Palmer, along with my co-host and going to work basketball with me, Brian Buller. Gentlemen, I'm excited, and I haven't even played yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is exciting. Exciting times at Jackson Christian for getting their second quarterfinal win in school history and advancing to the semifinals. And, and we kind of, like you alluded earlier, we shot ourselves in the foot early uh, with their offense. Coach Tacky does a really good job with the single wing and eating up the clock, junking up the game. And we had two early turnovers that got us in the hole early on. We were able to battle back from it. Oh, absolutely. We recovered. You know, this showed inner strength in the kids, and they believe in the plan. And it's like you said, they, they believed. And when we were down um, and we go in at halftime and you wonder how uh, 14 to 18-year-old kids are going to respond. But the positivity in the locker room, the guys that were up moving around, um, the, the theme was uh, we can come back. We, we can come back. We can get back in this game. We just have to do what we do and take care of business. And, you know, coaches kept going around, and, and I was – uh, trying to be in there a little more than normal during the halftime just because you just never know. And I didn't have to really say much. I, I would go around and coaches were going around, but the guys were stepping up. Ken Boyd was stepping up. We had linemen um, stepping up, talking to each other. You had Jay Mosley talking. And the, the vibe was we just need a stop or two and, and we can come back and do this thing. And then, unfortunately, they, they answered with a touchdown to start. And then, <laughs> so then, you know, then you're really thinking about it and, um, that we just kept fighting. Uh, we just kept fighting. And once we um, – and we'll talk about some adjustments. We got both coordinators on the show tonight. Um, defensively made some adjustments. And, but really the adjustment was the kids just laid it on the line. And, and it's all about them and how they responded that second half. Well, two things I, I wanted to ask you all about. Number one, I thought our blocking, maybe, maybe my evaluation of the – post game and I, I don't do it as thorough as y'all do. I felt like we stepped up in the second half, head and shoulders above. We blocked in the first half. I'm not going to criticize that, but we made, we held some blocks a little longer. We were a little quicker getting to the blocks and that gave our backs, our backs are reading backs even though mm -hmm. they're quicker than a hiccup and DeMoss is strong and Cam may be the strongest guy in the locker room. I don't know. I hear his weightlifting is beyond reproach. Pound for pound he probably uh, is. Pound yeah. for pound and uh, we did that, and but the defense, the holes that were there. And, folks, let me tell you, this formation, I had to play against it a long time ago. Why, that's all Whitehaven High School ran was the single wing. The old-timers will remember Charlie Fulton that played uh, tailback for UT. Well, he was recruited as a single wing tailback, and UT switched to the T formation when Doug Dickey came in. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie was also a talented uh, quarterback at UT, but Dewey Warren was better, and they moved him to tailback. It's not easy. It's power. They try to outnumber you at the point of attack, and then they showed us a new version. This is the spread modern single wing is what it's called now. There's a guy named Parker that wrote a book on it and all that good stuff, got videotape. But when they put three backs in the second half, they gave us our their best formation for just straight power. And our kids still found holes to get in, and there are no holes when they put the three backs up in those gaps. Absolutely. And early on in the game, and, and you know this from coaching, um, our scout team did a great job all week getting our guys prepared. Um, but it's always a little different 
once you step in those white lines, it, it hits a little quicker. And we had some guys miss some tackles in the holes. Um, but in the second half, we made some adjustments. We calmed everybody down. We told everybody to keep faith. We're going to make this a four-quarter game, and we're going to win it. And we were able to do that. Um, our guys stepped up. Our defensive line did a great job fitting on their blocks, staying in their gaps, and especially when they get in their overload sets and wanting to run it down the line. Our D-line did a great job fitting those gaps down the line, and our linebackers scraping over the top. i got to ask about this. I brought mine. They, uh, this is the last one I've got as a former offensive guy and offensive coordinator. Uh, I got one text that said, why did they go for two? According to the chart, you made the proper call. Now, Darby's going to make his own call. He's his own man. But, if, folks, you can hold it up right there. You can see that one came from a college. And that is the right call. You go for two in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we felt like it was the right call to go for two. Now, the execution of going for two, uh, we didn't get lined up properly. There were still some guys thinking that we were – it was just not communicated. They were still in field goal block, and, and I didn't want to burn our timeouts at that point and, and keep all three because we knew it was going to be a, a late quarter situation where we would either have to get a stop or we were going to have to go score again. So we didn't want to burn one of our three. They ended up burning their three timeouts early in the second half. So that's why after we got that first, first down, we could seal the game and take a knee because they were already out of timeout. So we felt like holding them in as long as possible for those last drives was going to be crucial. Yeah, it was. Pass coverage got better, but part of the reason we got some pressure and they don't like to throw the football and other than one route, we pretty well had theirs blanketed. We did. Um, they threw a little out route, ran 44 out of the backfield early and we were covering it. And then they got us on the fourth down. Um, they saw our corner was, was up hard and run support and, and rightfully so, you got to be. And they and so they ran the little, uh, I guess it's like a little crosser mm -hmm. uh, back behind our corner and were able to, to convert that fourth down. Um, but you know, when you're having to stop the run, 46, whatever it was, I think 50 mm -hmm. times maybe, you know, our, our corners are going to come up on that, and, and they got us there. But um, we responded, and, you know, our guys kept their cool. It, it got a little chippy. Um, yeah. And, and our guys did a good job of not responding to that. And, you know, we were, we were on the right end of one of those calls. Um, so that, that always uh, helps out. But that, that's just about keeping a level head and playing football um, and trying to win between, between the whistles. But – Coach, we had, you know, a lot of guys stepped up. Uh, Jay with two two huge touchdown catches uh, starting us off and then uh, the one to take the lead there late, Elijah. What can you say about that run? Um, you know, three rushes, 66 yards, 54 of that on that one touchdown where he just cuts back and, and he's just off to the races. Um, and then, you know, we'll talk to one of our, our linebackers, uh, but Trent Carey with 11 tackles from the corner spot. And – he was one-on-one -on -one with that quarterback quite a bit, or 22. Yes. I don't know if you call him a quarterback, whatever you want to call him. But uh, he, he was matched up one-on-one -on, -one on him quite a few times. And, and the kid's quicker. And he, he was fast. He, much respect to that kid and their whole team. Uh, they played hard. And, you know, Trent did a great job for us. And um, Austin in his second start, shaky a little bit. You know, they early on in the game, they linebacker makes a good play on the RPO and tips it up in the air, and, and their guy catches it. Yeah, he did a great job. That yeah. I want to give that linebacker. He was in his hook zone is what I call it, and he was there, and uh, that was probably their best defensive play all night. Yep. Y'all may think some others, fans, you may – Trust me, watching pass coverage, mm -hmm. that probably was their best effort all night. And he slipped on the one before half. Yeah. You know, we tried to steal a possession there um, and try to get, you know, at least in the field goal range for Zach, and we slipped there. But, you know, what can you say about him? You know, his second start doing – stepping up and, and keeping his composure. Um, and then that, that O-line, and we talk about it every week, and we know Coach Riker will talk about it here in a little bit. Um, and they've got a tough task this week. Um, if you look across that Nashville Christian defensive line, there's some size, and, and we'll get into that as well. But you don't go over to Nashville Christian and, and play against a small team. Uh, we've been over there quite a few times and understand uh, what's ahead of us. Yeah, they always have one of those big guys. Darby likes the numbers. You and I like the name. Like uh, 66. Now, his mm -hmm. rainy, no, name is Rainey is his last name. There you name. go. I'm, 60, I'm a number that's, that's a large <laughs> young man. 66 can block the sun out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if there's any sun when we arrive, if he's outside, <laughs> you won't see anything with dark. They'll have to turn the lights on at 3 o'clock <laughs> because he's that big. Oh, yeah, and he's, he's a great player. He's got great get off. And what impresses you about uh, 66, you guys know the names. I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's great with his hands. He's able to fight across blocks. Uh, so we're going to have to do a great job positioning ourselves to win. That's how we teach it. And getting turning our butt to the hole where our backs can strike it. 
Yeah, and they can win that boy when we do. After that first step, usually it's uh, instant lightning uh, when Boyd hits it. And Elijah is learning to hit the hole quicker. Mm -hmm. And he is a big young man. He can cow trump you if he has to. Now, Elijah, I want you to do it every time, son. I know you're listening. <laughs> once he figures that out, Coach, look out. I yeah, mean, because once he mm -hmm. figures out that he's 6'1", 195, you know, he, he's, he's going to be tough. And he already is, and he's done a great job for us in that Gets role. Gets better every time he mm -hmm. goes out there. He's got and all his, the rust off of him from having to sit out a little absolutely, bit. Absolutely, but his leadership alone on the sidelines where he's running water bottles out to the huddle, he's pumping guys up. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that's not going to show up on this paper and not going to show up on a, on a stat line or anything, but that's the – glue guys that you got to have guys to I want make you a run. talk about Eli Gay a minute he at times now I know they showed a forefront sometimes they moved mm -hmm. five, sometimes he had a huge young man mm -hmm. from middle Tennessee Christian on his and then after that guy got through whopping on him a little bit they slide the quicker guy down depending on how they flip flop their offense mm -hmm. I thought he did a yeoman's task all night uh, Outstanding job. I mean, I think we could take a whole segment talking about Eli Gay and the person that he is, but also not only the player that he is. And he is just as important as the running backs that we named, the quarterback that we named, anything. He, he kind of gets our offense going uh, because what he does um, every snap. We used to give a Whopper Lick of the Week award. As many hits as Trent had, he deserves it. But, you know, old, old Ty Smith snuck in there, and he got some big old tackles. Chilton, a kid that we didn't even know was going to play back in the summer. He was going mm -hmm. to try. He was having to get healthy. Yep. What an effort out of him. And then Walter, he gave a couple of really good plays of rest. He gave more than that, but he had a couple. Cedric clogged the middle up, but Cedric mm -hmm. has to have a rest. I mm -hmm. would too. I'd probably rest more than I played if it was me out there. But uh, Cedric, he came in and Walter gave us some at our linebackers. I thought Craig, I saw 55 showing up just about everywhere. And then uh, second half, I found Caleb Newsom, the dog linebacker. Ooh, a couple of big plays there. One of them late in the game that it didn't seal their fate, but it got pretty close to sealing their fate. Can I talk about the D-line? Yeah, you can. I was about to say. That, that's Coach our Gillum. guys, man. Yeah. That, me and Coach Gillum, that's, that's our guys. And Coach Gillum does a great job, and he works nights. And I would love to have him come in and talk about – uh, the interior defensive line, but, he, you know, they, they put in a ton of work. Ty's a kid that we try to keep one way um, and because of how valuable he is on offense. But this time of the year, we got to pull out everything we can to try to win a football game, and, and we needed Ty late. Chilton was getting tired. Um, he was taking on big 72 and double teams, and they were running right at you um, and, and putting him on, trying to put him on an island, and he was fighting. And we put Ty in, and – Ty makes a play late, kind of similar to the one I think you're talking about with Caleb where the ball goes away from us. We did a good job clogging it up. 22 had to kind of stutter and find the place to go. And Ty comes all the way down the line of scrimmage and makes a play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he it just tremendous. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Tremendous. Um, and we, we spent a lot of time watching the game afterwards and really just watching Caleb Newsom go against their big tackle was, was a battle to watch. And Caleb gave that kid – Respect to that kid. He, he's going to be a big-time college he's, football yeah, player. He's going to be playing State yeah. he's probably, yeah. Unless something changes, uh, he's ready to listen to Mike uh, Leach talk about pirates and aliens <laughs> yeah. and all that good yep. stuff. And Caleb stuff. gave him all he wanted. Um, and, and you could see it after one play we were watching, and they were battling, and, and 72 stuck his hand out, Caleb stuck his hand out. They shook hands and then turned around and did it for ten more plays. And that's what you like to see, two guys going at it, battling. Um, and, and that defensive line, Hunter Waldrop, uh, undersized kid, but you can't measure his heart. I mean, he, he comes in there and battles. Um, and, and it took everybody. And we've really been trying to do – you know, we played Joey one way um, Friday because we knew the effort, the maximum effort he puts out every play. He wasn't going to be able to go offense and defense. And Kyle Christensen to play, I think, pretty much every snap on the, as an mm -hmm. offensive tackle. That was huge to have Joey fresh late in the yes. game. Um, and so it's going to take another rotation. It's going to take another six or seven guys rotated in and out Friday to be able to uh, hang around and, and try to get a win. Absolutely, it will because I was – and you see all the numbers <coughs> I've got over here. I tried Darby Smith and put <laughs> numbers down. Look at all the numbers they got that either started or subbed in over here on, on my small chart. And, you know, they don't have many weaknesses – and I hate to leave that game. If y'all got anything else we need to say, Middle Tennessee Christian, even though the game got chippy at points because both teams were hitting each other, had a real white knuckler. 
uh, some of their fans caught me after the game, and then they were listening to our broadcast and said, you know, hey, y'all got a heck of a team. Uh, you got good players, and it was fun to play against a class team. Mm -hmm. And that was their comment about us. Just a battle. And absolutely. The, uh, we got a, <laughs> about a minute or two left in this segment. I think what I'm going to do is turn it over and let you guys, because I know y'all got some better thoughts than I have on this. Y'all got to see the film more. But what a win. What a win. But that game's over, and we got to move on. That's right. And we got a tough opponent coming up in Nashville Christian. They do a great job. Coach Brothers, uh, we've been going up against him pretty much every year since we've been in Division II. And, and they do a great job with their players, getting them ready. And we know that it's going to be a battle um, on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Coach, I know you're bound to have something to say. Uh, we want to go play Nashville Christian. Hey, if you're listening up there, you've got a great team. We come into play. Absolutely. And we – we celebrated a little bit, and then, you know, you get the film work. And I think it was Sunday we got done game planning, and we all kind of sat around there for a minute and just everybody kind of started smiling. And it's like the semifinals. We're, we're here. You know, we've been aiming for this game. We've made a couple second-round games. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we all just kind of looked at each other like this is what it's about. And, and our kids, man, can't say enough about them. You know, we, we prepare and, and do a lot of studying and stuff, but those kids listen, they take it in, and they're the ones that go lay it on the line um, each week. And, and, man, it's a great group to be around. I'm fortunate to be able to coach them. My kids are around them. Um, just exciting times for us, and, and we're excited for this opportunity. Yes, and the Lord has blessed all of us, blessed us with some great players, teams, our administration. Here We're here at Hub City Deli. Come on down. The Italian pork is the specialty sandwich of the week. I got inside knowledge, though, that you can still get the Beckham. Try that. <laughs> trust me on that. The brisket is great. Everything's great at Hub City Deli. Uh, I think the young lady forgot my chest pie, and I'm going to have to remind her of that at the break. But we're going to come back, and when we come back, we're going to surprise you with one of our coaches who might be the smartest defensive guy around here. We'll be back <laughs> after this. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back here. You're listening anywhere in the universe tonight, and we know you are. Uh, I've got to say a quick hey to Moose, because if I don't, he'll send me a couple of texts. Uh, he's listening in Kingsport, Tennessee, and in Gatlinburg. See, we got listeners for this show everywhere. Jackson Eagles show right here from Hub City Deli, and we are just about to talk with a young man that his defensive knowledge has caused him to lose every hair on his head. <laughs> He came up and he had his players playing a step up. They played hard in the first half. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of, even though we were down a couple of scores. Uh, we had some turnovers that put us in bad spots. And uh, you don't play against the modern single wing. This is not the old, for the U.S. Tennessee people, Whitehaven single wing and the UT that they ran before Doug Dickey got there. This is a, a version that's a little tougher. Uh, I played against it. Glad I didn't have to defend it. And he, he and Coach Bullard and the other coach made a few adjustments at halftime. We weren't playing bad. We played awfully good, didn't we, Coach, in the second half. Coach, and Coach Phillips is here. I forget to introduce him because it's like my own brother coming in <laughs> right here. Still want him to coach softball with Coach Jennifer, though. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'll tell you what. The other night was fun. Um, those guys at halftime, what I, what I liked most, and Coach Bull can tell you this, y'all may have already mentioned it with Coach P, is – is we went into the locker room, and it was we had, we had kind of already talked about the adjustments on the sideline, and it was we got this. Those adjustments are going to work. We're calm. Do your job. Read your keys. We got it. And they busted that play in the first half, or sorry, second first for second play of the second half, and then after that it was I mean pretty lights out. Uh, Eli Craig I think had the best quote on Monday. He goes, man, when you read your keys. 
pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> is it kind of like what Coach Boone said in Remember the Titans? Just give it a little time and it'll work. Yeah. That's what happened. And, folks, that really is it. Coach gave you a good assessment of that. Coach, I'm going to let you ask Coach a few questions. You and him talk back and forth because these are the men that helped the young men make it happen. And it did happen in the second. And, folks, don't you think, because I'll go ahead and tell you, I nominated two running backs for Mr. Football. Uh, and I'm sure I'll get some flack from some other schools. I nominated Cam Boyd, obviously, and I nominated Eli Wilson from Middle Tennessee Christian. Mm -hmm. He is the real deal, mm -hmm. and we stopped him. Absolutely. And, Coach Phillips, we, we work a plan all week. Um, guys are, are working the plan and aiming points and attack points and stuff like that, and then we get in the game, and, and they're gashing us a little bit with the, with the stretch. Um, what, what was it like um, early on in that game – uh, when we come off defense, I flip over to offense and, and signal and do those kind of things. But what is it like when you when we're struggling a little bit? We've worked a plan all week. The guys have confidence in it. They have faith in it, but it's not working. What were those conversations like on the sideline? Um, one thing that I tried to do with the group that we have is just stay calm and not show them any panic. Um, what was awesome is that when they get to the sideline, they are immediately sitting down looking at me, all right, what do we have to do? Like, what do we have to do? Not me or what is this person or where are we miss. It was what do we have to do as a defense? And, you know, the first time it was we kind of thought, okay, broken tackle, let's just go back out there. Second time, all right, maybe we need to mix some things up. And uh, being able to do that and, and make some adjustments right there on the sideline, for those guys to understand and then to go back out there uh, was was pretty incredible, and it shows how well they they have gelled and get along with each other. Talk about um, talk about kind of what what they were doing to us early. Um, what what was the scheme? What, how were they blocking it to where they were they were kind of outnumbering us over on the other side there? So, in three years of being a coordinator, I've never faced anything like that, um, and really. If I think back, probably in 11 years of just coaching, I don't know if I've seen anything quite like that. And so all week long, you know, we, we practiced a certain plan. And if you remember on Thursday, mm -hmm. we said, hey, let's walk through this just in case. This will be our adjustment. And um, it ended up – that's in, that ended up being what worked the end of the second quarter and, and all through the second half. Um, so, and, and I got to give him a shout out. Uh, it wasn't all my idea. Uh, I, I talked on the phone with Dr. Benton's son, Tate Benton, who's a defensive coordinator in Arkansas. And he sent, he sent us a piece of paper and he said, man, I've defended this a couple times. Here's a suggestion. And that was our adjustment. And, uh, I, I called him immediately after the game and he was so, he was so happy for us. It, it is a tough offense to defend, and they held their three back, and it's got a special name. The name of the offense is the modern spread single wing. Now, the spread part of it may be a misnomer because they fix the hammer you just like the old single wing at the point of attack, and they have counteraction and all those things. And they had a big old guy, 72, like we talked about in the earlier segment. He's probably going to sign with Mississippi State. That's where he's leaning right now. And – Coach, our kids are smaller. I don't care. Cedric's the only one that's got some of their size. And we did a good job. Y'all fill the holes. But when they put three backs and those backs get into the hole so that you have no place to shoot a linebacker, and we still stopped them. Yeah, I, when we watched film Friday night after the game, we stayed up at the field house and we, we rewatched. And I'll tell you what, um, you know, you, you mentioned 72. He's a very good lineman. And he's a junior, so, so he'll be back yep. next year. Uh, I think a lot of those guys are juniors that they have. That's a very good football team. The The two guys that ended up on him most of the night was, was Joey Carr and Caleb Newsom, and there were some plays. Um, it, was, it was some grown man football mm. down there on the line. And I tell you what, Caleb Caleb and Joey held their own with that guy. And, and, and again, give credit to him. He's, he's really good. Yeah. Talk about, before we talk about Kai, uh, talk about the defensive line and the rotation and – and kind of have we had some guys step up there late that, that aren't our normal rotation or defensive lineman? Yeah, so we mentioned those two, and Sed did a great job. Chilton Smith did a great job. And we had talked all week about, hey, we got to keep guys fresh and rotate some other guys in there. Daniel, Daniel Green came in. 
for some plays. And then Ty Smith, uh, he hasn't played a lot of defense this year. But last week, um, I think we all felt really comfortable with him. And uh, he made a – I can't remember, second or third down. He made a really big yeah. play uh, chasing the guy down. Guard pulled. He followed it. And, and I think a tackle for a loss or maybe right at the line of scrimmage. Um, but he, he played some key minutes down the stretch for us. I got to ask, did you, do you teach the technique that you get on the hip of the guard with that hand and follow the guard to the football? We talk about it. Now, this – Coach Bull and Coach Gillum okay. do all the D-line work, and they've done a tremendous job this year. Well, we did a good job the other night. The guards uh, took us to the football a whole bunch of times. They even tried to run uh, what I call a sucker play and send a guard in the wrong direction. We checked it out, didn't buy it, and they did not get maybe a half yard or yard on that. So I, I wanted to set it up this way tonight where you could talk about Kai a little bit before he comes on. 15 tackles and a fumble recovery. Talk about him. Coach Phillips, talk about Kai for a second and then and then finish up giving us a little bit of Nashville Christian and what we can expect as we go down there. All right, so Kai, you know, we missed him early on. He was out a couple weeks and then getting him back, uh, I think about the Harding Academy game, has been huge. Um, but last week, man, he he read his keys. He finally, and I think I can say this he like that, he finally slowed down and read it, played an inside out, and he's just a sophomore. Right. So it's taken him, you know, a couple weeks to get used to, to a Friday night feel. Um, great job, huge fumble recovery. Uh, but when you look at that, those 53 tackles, like you may say, 53 tackles for a middle linebacker, well, he's, he's only been in seven games. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. He's been really, really good for us. And I think he would say this too, uh, our other middle linebacker, Eli Craig, um, Eli didn't have as many tackles, but I'm telling you, Eli took on number 44 yes, all night long, and that's what that's what freed Kai up for this. And you have to have that in that. Coach, anything either one of you want to coaches say before we finish this segment up? Well, I'll, I'll say Nashville Christian, they're really good. They got a big – which everybody this time of year is really good. Um, got a good quarterback, athletic receivers, uh, running back that we saw last year, big line. Going to go give it our best shot on Friday. Are they going to wear track shoes? Uh, the quarterback could be a track man. Hey. He makes all his passes off scrambling. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we face, that's why some of those non-region games, we liked facing some of those running quarterbacks <laughs> with uh, North Point, ECS, those teams. Yeah, or St. George's. was a very good running quarterback. So, we, we've seen guys. Um, I don't know if we've seen a guy this big that moves like that, but it is what it is at this point. we gotta got to try and give it our best shot and go stop him. Absolutely. We're going to come back and have more interviews. We're going to talk to Kai White. You'll, you'll love this young man. and he, uh, he's, going to, he's going to set some records before he leaves Jackson Christian School. He has learned the art of discipline and then how to crash to the football. I like what you said about inside out because that's the way you have to play this. Just like defensive ends or people set in the corner have to keep people on their inside shoulder. Yeah, see, I told you, Coach Phillips, he's a genius. <laughs> he is a genius. We're going to take a timeout. You still got time to come and get some vegetable beef soup. Again, I'm going to give the Beckham a little extra play here. We're at Hub City Deli. You are listening to the Jackson Christian Eagles show. We'll be back after this timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back on the greatest show in the universe, and we have people listening from all over. But we are about to introduce the first player segment, and it's a young man that uh, tackling over 50 tackles, and he missed some games early. I, I'm still not by that stat yet, but Kai Wyatt is here. I don't know how many times I called his name the other night, but it was a bundle of them. And if he wasn't making the tackle, he's either assisting or he was picking up fumbles, picked up a very important fumble. And Coach, I'm going to let you take it from there. Yes, sir, Kyle. We appreciate you being here with us tonight. And before we talk to, to Kyle, I, just watching him last week in practice, 
trying to diagnose um, that offense and trying to see uh, see his fits and see see where he needs to plug all those things. You kind of you kind of notice guys that have really good practices, and it's sometimes it's one day or two days. But this kid. Um, Every day uh, just got better and better last week. And, and you could kind of see that if, if he did what he did in practice and slowed the game down, he was going to have a good game for us Friday night. And we talked a little bit about it earlier, 15 total tackles. And when Joey punched that ball out there late um, to get us kind of going, Kyle was there to fall on it. Um, and, you know, 53 tackles for the year, three for loss, a fumble recovery and a sack. But those numbers don't do do not do it justice. He, he would have – uh, plenty more if he if he was healthy those first few games and uh, we are glad that that he is with us and a smart kid and uh, wants to learn and understand the why of things and Kai talk a little bit um, unorthodox offense you know we we knew going into it we hadn't seen anything like it um, our scout team offensive lineman did a tremendous job of giving us a look what were what were some challenges that you and Eli and White faced last week going into that game. Um. We faced the challenge of knowing that they were going to be a really physical team and knowing that the only way that we are going to make them give out was if we punch them in the mouth first. And um, trying to figure out an offense that we had never gone against before, it was all new. And we just had to focus at practice so we could get the job done on Friday. Absolutely. Um, and – you talked about hitting them, being aggressive. They they like to play the a physical brand of football, um, and and early on maybe they got us a little bit. What what was it like? Um, we talked about it from a coach's perspective. What was halftime like from a player perspective of being down, being down in a playoff game? I think it was eighteen to seven, maybe there eighteen eleven point lead at half. I'm pretty sure is what they had. What was it like there in in the locker room from your perspective? Um, the whole goal coming in from half was knowing that we had to come out and get two stops and just trusting our offense to score off those two stops if we could get them. And they ended up scoring before we could, but we got all those stops coming and got that fumble, and we are back in the ball game real quick. Absolutely. They, they come and score. Um, they broke, I think it was the second play, um, like we talked about a little bit earlier, and, and it, we didn't waver. Um, you still felt like on the sideline, even though we're down, we're down to an offense that likes to control the clock. You still felt like that we had energy. We had we had time to go do it. You know, our offense answers with a touchdown, and then um, then they put the ball on the ground. And, and what you what you see on that play uh, specifically from your perspective? Um, well, for one, I saw Joey Carr make a really good play on that running back. Just fit right through his gap and just got hands straight on the running back. And then we had the rest of our defense coming over. And it just so happened that I was coming over late, and Joey punched the ball out, and it just fell out right in front of me. And, and we knew we would need a turnover. When you're down, multiple scores to that team. But it's not like they put the ball on the ground. We Joey was there to force it, um, and, and you were there to recover it, and, and that, minimum, that momentum kind of got us going. Talk about our crowd um, and our students and, and everybody there. Did, did our guys feed off the energy of our crowd any? Uh, yes, sir. We had um, – we had a loud crowd the first half. They were playing a lot of music. We were still down. And the whole time they were still cheering us on. And then we came out the second half and went out, got a stop, and score off it and scored off of it. And um, they were just cheering us on the whole way. As we kept doing good, they just kept lighting us up even more and more. So it was great just having a whole crowd of people behind you, even if you're down. Absolutely. Ty, i got to ask you this. It takes much of a man and much of a team game got a little chippy. Uh, there's a little extra pushing and shoving. How'd you guys keep your cool? Because they lost theirs once or twice. And I think I saw the referee give them an eyeball and possibly should have gotten them again. But we didn't get in trouble. And it, that's big to this game. Um, I think we learned from our mistakes against Columbia. And I think we had 80 yards of penalties. And um, that's just – that's not okay. We can't we can't be doing that. We can't afford to do that in the playoffs. And um, we knew we had all the momentum coming in from halftime, and we got that stop and got the fumble. So we knew that there was no point in doing that. We just had to play our game, and we could finish. Absolutely. And of course, a win is a win. But we've moved on. Any any quick thoughts without giving any trade secrets away about Nashville Christian? 
Um, well, it's back to what we've been saying. We just got to do our job like we have been doing all year and just get it done so we can go to the state championship. Absolutely. You want to say anything to fans about getting out and supporting us and being ready to go win and move on? Um, I know not everyone's going to be there like last week because it's in Nashville, but there are some people going. I just want to say thank you for coming. And um, I, we're going to need y'all to be as loud as y'all were last game, even with a little smaller crowd. What about Dr. Benton letting school out, though? Do you think that will bring some more people? Uh, Yes, sir, but I don't think all the students know that yet. I got you. Oh, we've announced something. You heard it first right here <laughs> on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. One of the great linebackers. I'm looking forward to two more years with him because he's brought me a lot of joy playing linebacker this year. We're going to take a timeout. I'm going to get hold of my pie, and I'm not lying. I don't ever lie to you all on the air. You come down here to Hub City Deli. I see Chuck Ray here. He's eating. And you know it's good food if Chuck Ray's here, one of our coaches. But we'll be back after this timeout on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back. We've got another special guest, but Worthy Road Studios helps bring you all of these broadcasts of the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. They also bring you everyone that we can if the National Federation, and I have to take my shot at them. I'll be nice at them keeps us sometimes from doing what we want to for the school and the players, but Worthy Road Studios, the ball game blitz, and, and a lot of great sponsors like Hub City Deli they need to support those people. And I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've been in other forms of media before, and the money you spend to support the Jackson Christian Eagles, you don't have to pay for the broadcast like you do. Matter of fact, if this was a National Federation school, you'd be paying to watch the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. But the sponsors get it to you free, and sponsors, you're getting a bargain. Paul gives you a great rate. Now, i got to remind everybody, this show is copyrighted. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. And now, a guy that in the second half, he looked like a genius. He looked smart in the first half. Uh, two fumbles, though, keep you from looking like a genius, don't they, Coach? Thank coach you. Reichert is here. Coach Buller, I'm going to let you and Coach Reichert take it away. Yes, sir, Coach. Uh, appreciate you being here. Um, talk, let's talk about that. Seven points, you know, scored in the first possession. Um, seven points going into halftime, finished the game with 27. Uh, what were some of the adjustments and, and what were some of the things that, that MTCS was doing to us? Well, like, like Coach said, we were able to get off to a good start. We drove the ball down the field. Um, but really the worst-case scenario happened on those next two drives. We knew against this team that we couldn't turn the ball over but just because they eat up clock. Um, and then we get the kind of the fluky tipped interception, and then we get the, um, let's just call it questionable fumble call, at least in my opinion. Um, that's I'm all smiling. I'll, <laughs> you notice I'm smiling. <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. I had that. Mike my tongue the other night. I, there's sometimes the games where I'm glad I'm not mic'd up, Coach, and yes. that, was, that was one of them. Um, but, you know, we, we knew we could just keep doing our basic stuff. Um, we went to the little more up-tempo because we knew we had to score quickly. Um, and that's really all it was, Coach, is to stick into our, our, our basic game plan. Um, and I was so proud of our guys because there could have been frustration. There could have been finger-pointing. Um, but we kind of got together at halftime and talked about, like, hey, we just got to keep doing our jobs to keep trusting um, the process and keep trusting the game plan. And it's going to work itself out, and that's exactly what happened. Well, we had a workmanlike approach. We really the, did. The kids did. They did a, a great job on that. They knew that, and that's Chuck Chuck Ray leaving. They knew that we had the up tempo. They couldn't stop it. They really couldn't. No. Uh, as a casual fan and a broadcaster, to take the coach <coughs> part out of me. Uh, it was obvious to see. We went uh, to our up tempo offense, mm -hmm. no huddle. There was no way they were going to stop us. If we had had more time, we'd scored some more points. I, I think so. And we, and we kind of talked about that as coaches because I voiced the opinion of, you know, I was a little surprised at how unprepared they were for it. And Coach Phillips actually brought up a good point 
with their offense, a lot of teams probably don't go up-tempo against them because they want to maximize their own time of possession. Um, so I think that might have played into it. Um, but, man, huge credit to um, Austin and the skill guys for being able to go out there and get lined up. And um, Austin did a great job of, um, you know, orchestrating that. That takes a lot of moving parts and him making sure guys are set and getting the ball to the right spot. So he did a great job. Oh, he did. And mm -hmm. you were talking about that. No, they they probably didn't. And those teams make a mistake because you're making – y'all made Middle Tennessee Christian pay, play at a pace they didn't want to play exactly. at. Exactly. And Gary is the only guy on their team that could have played scout team and imitated our offense. <laughs> uh, there was there was no other way to do it. And they, I've talked to some of their people. They practiced for it. They knew mm -hmm. we were going to run it. Yeah. They couldn't stop it. Yeah. We execute, folks. <clears throat> execution's the key. You're exactly right. Exactly right. Coach Riker, I know it's not about um, this kind of stuff, and and you'll take a, a look at this in the off season. But Coach McLean does a good job preparing us for the show. And <clears throat> I didn't know this, but the 2022 Eagles has tied the school record for the most points scored in the season. Offense is rushed for 2,817 yards on 280 carries, which comes out to 10 yards a carry. Talk about um, the, what this offense uh, means to you and these linemen and, and kind of how you've grown uh, and have a good relationship with these guys. Well, first and foremost, 100% of the credit goes to those athletes who are on the field. Um, just the talents there, obviously, but just the complete and total buy-in um, from everybody. And it's been so cool, especially the last half of the season. You see guys settling into their roles and embracing their roles. Um, and I, I can think back to, to meetings we had in the spring where we, we preached, hey, everybody's going to have a chance to make plays. And if you, if you block for one another, if you pull for one another, your chance is eventually going to come. And you can just look down the line on this, the last half of the season – Everybody has had a chance to step up and contribute. You know, I could I could name all kinds of guys, but I think of Lance, who probably doesn't get as many touches as he should, the game winner at Trinity. I think of a guy like Daniel, who's had big games for us against Fayette Academy. I think of Elijah, who on any other team in our region is probably the featured running back, but he comes in and he has a massive run. And it's so awesome to see guys when they buy in, their time come. And it, that's, that's just great to see. It really is mm -hmm. a, a great effort by your offense. Thought the blocking picked up. It wasn't bad in the first half, but it really picked up right. in the second half. They were a little crisper, mm -hmm. held them just a little longer. And you know that single second allows a good running back by, like Cam Boyd. All he needs is that split second to get through the hole, and he's quicker than a hiccup. And uh, I miss him sometimes, have to pick him up, because <laughs> once he goes in between those linemen, I lose him. And then all of a sudden, coming out of there with a bolt of lightning is Cam Boyd. <laughs> Absolutely, and we, we'll sit there and watch a run three or four times back after the game and just try to figure out how he did get through the hole, some of the holes that he gets through. Coach, I kind of we set it up this way tonight because I wanted you to talk about Cam um, as, as offensive coordinator, as a guy that spends a lot of time with him before he comes on. Uh, talk about him and, and his role on our team and, and just how big he has been for us the last few years. If, if I could create a, a player in a lab to, to be a feature running back, with the mentality and the talent and just the workman's like attitude, it would be Cam Boyd. Um, just just his tenacity as he runs, and I think his senior year this year, you've seen it kick up a notch. Um, and he's a guy who not only does he get stronger as the game goes on, he has gotten stronger as the season goes on. And, and like Coach Bull said, there's some there's some plays he makes where I've never seen anything like that before. Um, just the strength he has, but also the vision and you know, I, I joke with the other coaches sometimes. I try not to overcoach our athletes. I say, hey, you, you strike it where I tell you to strike it, but after that you do whatever you want to. And, and he embodies that. You know, he'll strike a hole, but then he'll bend it back to the backside. And, I, and I'm thinking, what are you doing, Cam? And then it's a 70-yard touchdown run. Let the big dog run. Uh, exactly. And, and, th and that's, what I tr that's the approach I try to take with all our athletes is, hey, go be a, go be a dude. Go be an athlete. Yep. You know, so he, he, he's unbelievable. And just his, his leadership this year um, – can't tell you the amount of times that, you know, even Friday night when we're down at halftime, guys are frustrated. He's the one that's rallying the troops. He's the one that's encouraging. Um, he, he's the alpha on our team, and he keeps guys in line, and he models how we're supposed to work, and guys step in line. And you can't have success like we've had this year without that guy on your team. Um, and just obviously the production on the field is huge, but the intangibles he brings, unbelievable. Absolutely. All, all that being said, 
Um, it comes down to a semifinal game. Yep. Comes down to traveling to Nashville Christian Friday and and what do we have to do offensively um, to have a chance to, to to make it a game there in the fourth quarter? Well, first off, we we, we can't abandon the run game. Yeah, it's going to be tempting because they're they're box they're box defenders. Um, they're really good. They have two really good defensive linemen in the middle. Um, um, good size, good speed. Um, but we have, and we preach this all week. We have to be satisfied with three, four yards a, ga- um, a game. Okay, um, they're probably going to limit a lot of our big plays, but we got to keep pounding and we got to trust our game plan. Um, and we just got to be patient offensively. I've already talked with some guys today. Um, we just got to trust the process. Um, they're going to they're going to stop us sometimes. We're probably going to have to punt a couple times. Um, but if we can hang in there, um, drive the ball down the field, not get behind the chains, uh, we like our chances. Um, we're not scared of these guys. Um, I, I don't think we have a, a person in our locker room who's intimidated or, or the moment's going to be too big. We just got to go out there and we got to execute like we have done all year. Absolutely, and they do. They have an awesome front line. They've got a fifth player, but they've got good size. they got one guy that blocks out the sun, 66. Yes, he does. <laughs> and then uh, I noticed 54 likes to come down inside mm-hmm. a whole lot. And, but that's all right. We know how to bounce it outside. That's exactly too. right. Absolutely. <laughs> Coach, a quick final word, and we're going to take our final timeout. Um, yeah, I just want to give so much credit to our defense on Friday night. Um, you know, I've been joking with Coach Phillips all year. There's going to come a time where y'all are going to have to bail us out because um, we're not executing. And that's what happened Friday night. Um, you know, we put up seven points in the first half. That's not up to our standards. Um, but we're watching film back on Friday night. The, the level of physicality our defense played against that um, just, you know, mudded up offense. Man, I was so proud of them. And we were able to get back into that game. I know a lot of people look at the offense, say, y'all scored all those touchdowns. The defense getting stop after stop after stop and causing the turnover, that was huge. Um, and just the level of – I don't know if you all realize the level – you I know you realize <laughs> the level of preparation that goes into s- slowing down that offense whatsoever. It's unlike anything you've seen all year. Um, and just the – I can't imagine how many hours of film Coach Phillips watched and just him putting that in, in terms our guys could understand. Man, they did such a phenomenal job on Friday night. Absolutely. We're going to take a final time out. When we come back, we're going to switch the last segment a little bit. Cam Boyd's going to be the feature of it. The closer. Coach Bullard <laughs> and I will close up with some remarks and some things about our opponent and maybe some past things. And, of course, every time Coach Palmer wins a ball game, he does set a new record. I'll, I'll bring that out. And he would love for us to talk about that. Yeah, he is too modest. <laughs> uh, I, I love him to death, but he's too modest for things like, let's take that time out, come back, and I'm going to get some more of my pie here at Hub City Deli on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back on the ball game blitz, the Jackson Christian Eagle Show Worthy Road Studios. And folks, get ready. Hopefully gravity will hold you down because the man that's able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, more powerful than a speeding locomotive (laughs) and a guy that can make hay when there's no hay to be made with the sunshine. Cam Boyd is here. Coach, I'm getting too excited to talk about my main man running back here. <laughs> yes, sir, Cam, and, and I appreciate you holding on, Cam, and waiting. We did the show a little bit different tonight. wanted to give each coordinator an opportunity <clears throat> to talk about their talk about their uh, individual player and, and appreciate you. Let's talk a little bit about the game, Cam. 21 rushes, 117 yards, um, and a touchdown. 16th career, 100-yard rushing game. Um, just continue to pile up stats and, and accomplishments, <clears throat> Cam, but – what was the main stat that uh, that you took away from Friday night? The main stats? Yep. What's the main message from Friday night? Um, just to take it one play at a time, one drive at a time. You know, um, although things may not go your way, like one drive or one play, although things may not go your way, one drive or one play, you know, just trust the process, trust the sticks, keep pushing with your boys, with your Absolutely. brothers. Absolutely. And – 
Cam, early on, um, you know, we go and we score on our first drive uh, and then shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit, as we've talked about on the show, a couple turnovers. It's 18-7. to seven. Um, We're going into halftime. You have 24 minutes left um, of, of football at Jackson Christian. And what was, what was your message and, and what was your – um, what message were you trying to portray and show those guys in that locker room at halftime? Hey, man, anything is possible. You know, with faith and hope in the Lord, you know, hey, he got your back. If God is for us, who can be against us, man? You know, you just got to believe and have hope. Like, during that whole se- um, se- session, I was literally just on the other side of the sideline just talking to God. I'm just like, Lord, see, I know you threw adversity, but you don't understand, man. My my faith, my hope is, is stronger than that, you know. You can throw things this way, but, Lord, the the hope and the faith is not going to change. So, so it's just, yes, sir. As we as we come out of halftime, uh, we're fired up. And, and all things considered, we felt like we were in a good place, and they scored a touchdown. Uh, their quarterback broke another run, and it's 25-7. Um, and, and then we kind of we kind of just flipped that switch um, offensively. Uh, changed our tempo up there, and we're, and we're able to score. Um, and, and talk about that pace and talk about how that can affect the defense like it did Friday night. Um, well, we got um, we got the run game down and packed. You know, everyone, we felt smooth. We were together. We played our game. You know, like I said, we took it one play at a time. And once we realized where they slipped up at, we, we just took it around with it. You know, we trust the process. We we did that run, then we we did a um a hurry up. It was they weren't ready, and we just we kept doing that, kept doing it. We did the things that we found the loopholes, yeah. and we took it to our advantage. I saw there late. Um, you kind of you had a run, and you kind of squatted down um, there trying to catch your breath. And Coach Irv asked you if you wanted a, if if a lot you needed Elijah to come in, and, and you said no. Um, and what in in years past maybe that that your breath would have got you and you might have come out. But talk about that, being one of your last times – well, your last time on that field. But, you know, coming down to some of your last plays at Jackson Christian, what what kind of heart and determination and, and obviously said faith, what was going through your mind when you just said, I got it, just let me stay and keep giving me the ball and keep doing what we're doing offensively? Um, honestly, how much – how bad did I want it? You know, I knew, I knew that um, – I know Elijah's a very great running back. Um, kudos to him, although, you know, he's quarterback as well. But I knew where we were and that my team still needed me. And I knew where my, how my body was, how I could breathe. I knew I could still take control of my breathing if I just took that little quick second and then I could get back to it and get, get the ball, run it down. I, I just – I don't know. It was just how bad did I want it. And you, and, said, and you said something that struck me. It's not that we don't have faith in Elijah. He's, he's yes, tremendous. Sir. It's as a senior – as as the game is getting on the line, you wanted the ball and that's you right. wanted to be out there with your teammates. And Cam, that's that's tremendous. You know, we were able to um, we we got the turnover, we got the fumble, um, and and the energy in the stadium was was huge. Talk about um, and and I love to talk about this so people understand how big they how big of an impact that they make on the game. Talk about the energy from the crowd and to the music, to the announcer, to the band, everything that was going on Friday night. Ah oh, man, the crowd plays a big factor, like. It's it's such a big difference from the team having the energy and the whole stadium. Like when we have our, our fans, our student section, the cheerleaders cheering us on with all the energy and like just everything they can give, it, it adds to it. You know, it, it clicks into the gears and we, we move even more fluently. We're more confident, you know. It, yes, sir. It, it, it gave you chills. Uh, when we got nice. the – when we scored the touchdown, uh, Austin completed the ball there to Jay – and we took the lead. That stadium was one of the loudest I've I've heard it in, in about ten years Fans of being did here. A good job, even on bad uh, calls by the officials, they did a good job. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So Coach, Cam, go ahead, Coach. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say we've got about five minutes, and and you go ahead and ask your last one. Then I'm I've got a technical question for Cam that I think the listeners, and then what I'm going to do is let you finish with all the important information about the game. And uh, but you had a question. You were I was asking. just going to say it, semifinals. Um, Second time in school history. Uh, the the other time, uh, we won the state championship, yes, and, and so we are in uh, have the opportunity to play for the semifinals to get a chance to go to the state championship game. What does that mean to you, and what does that mean to our team? It means everything, especially coming from my freshman year where I was just an ineligible and I was a water boy. To see how our record has come 
and just increased and done better, advanced as the years have gone by, it, it truly means a lot. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Coach. Cam, the fans want to know this. You find the hole, you bounce, you have the jump step, you have all the nice little things. They want to know about your peripheral vision. How wide can you see? Now, quarterbacks have to be able to see this wide with their peripheral vision. Yes, sir. How wide can you see? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. It's just it's an instinct. It's like if I – like, I don't know. I guess – God bless you. Right in here. Yes, sir. It, it's something that you, you will have to mature into, though. It's not something you just will truly get, I feel. Because, like, starting out, like, Pee Wee, I was straight tunnel vision. It was something I had to adjust to, grow up with, and continue to practice on. Absolutely. Great answer to that. Coach, I'm going to let you and Cam, and all I need is about 30 seconds to sign us off. We've got about three minutes if my main man, Gary Lockhart, always doing a good job over there. So, y'all finish it up, and I'll close it out with 30 seconds. I'm going to give a couple of thoughts, and I want Cam to have kind of our final uh, word from Jackson Christian, and you can close it, Coach. But, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate. We're, we're fortunate and blessed to be in this game. Um, it's, it was something we worked towards. It's something we talked about. Um, but, you know, these guys, all the, all the credit goes to them, just like Coach Reichard mentioned, how much time that they've put in, answered the call week after week, taking some lumps, uh, you know, a loss there early, a couple, you know, slip-ups there. Um, but just how they responded each and every week. And we keep talking about getting 48 more minutes, and, and we play each game to try to get that. And so I, I'm, we're excited. We're excited to be going to Nashville. Um, Dr. Benton made a call to, to let out uh, school at, at 105 Friday. We hope there's a bunch of people caravanning coming to Nashville because these guys deserve it. Um, and with the, with the impact that they had on the game Friday, they can have the same kind of uh, impact there even on the road. Small stands, packing Amen. there together, uh, make some noise and, and come cheer on these guys because they deserve every bit of it. Um, and, and, Cam, I'm going to give you some time, and then we'll let Coach Joe – um, close this down, but what do you want to say to the community, to your folks, to anybody like that watching? Um, honestly, um, shout out to my parents, shout out to my family, and shout out to the fans, everyone that has sacrificed anything to help us. Um, thank you all for everything. We couldn't have done it without y'all, and Lord's willing, we hope and pray that y'all can make it um, this Friday to Nashville. Even if y'all got to, like Coach said, pack in one vehicle. Let's make it happen. There's room over another video. Is, that, is there anything coming out this week that you know about? Maybe Maybe another video on social media. Tune in on Instagram at Jackson okay. Christian. Okay, you there you something. go. Friday night, 7 o'clock, TWSAA semifinal. You don't want to miss it. The last time we were at this point in a season, we played for the championship of the state and won it. And guess who's in the opposite bracket? Friendship Christian. <laughs> Check note. One yep. in five all time against Nashville Christian. Second semifinal appearance. Last one was against Mount Pleasant in 2006. Tickets go on sale. Go fan. Remember, it's $8 plus the service fee. You can get them at $10 up there. I would dress warmly. We've got a fine bunch of young men, young men that won't fold like a cheap accordion. I can tell you that. They do the job. They'll come out and hit you. They'll give you some entertainment. And uh, we won't have a broadcast this week. Check the uh, – I hate to give them any credit. Check the National Federation. Now, the uh, bunch over in Nashville will have a repay. They're not even letting them do the game. But I'm going to tell you what. For Coach Bullard, for Coach Darby Palmer, we've elevated Cam a little bit. He's part-time assistant coach tonight. That's right. He's done a good job. <laughs> and Gary Lockhart, who has always done a super job. The school will let you know when the next Eagles show is. There will be one. Could be before a basketball game, et cetera, like that. Support the Eagles. Support the school. Thank you to Paul Schultz, our executive director. He's here tonight. And thank you to Hub City Deli and to all of you. And remember, this is copyrighted. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, further use of this without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. Thanks for your time this time. Till next time, good night, all.